Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about crowdsourcing and the way it applies to our project, um, the Trailblazers project. What is the Trailblazers project? It's essentially an archival project um, that looks for images, biographies, and stories of women in the earth sciences, so archaeology, geology, paleontology, with the idea that just by providing this kind of archive, we can actively change people's perceptions of um, who can do these careers. Um, that sort of old quote, you know, if you can't see it, you can't be it. Uh, lots of people may have heard, for instance, of Dorothy Garrett, who was the first female professor in the UK. She's a professor of archaeology at Cambridge. How many people know that she led, um, you know, sort of all female expeditions? That there were other women on these expeditions. Okay, yes, some of you did know. Thank you, good. You've been on our site. Um, you know, but there are amazing stories out there that are just under the surface and we really, you know, these stories so we can find, you know, um, these women all work together. And then we can dig deeper. We find, for instance, the story of Yosra, which is one of the more interesting stories. This is Dorothy Garrett seated, pictured with Yosra, who has her baby with her. Yosra was a local Palestinian uh, worker. She was employed to sift fines. And she's actually the one who found the little fragment that identified the Tavern One Neanderthal. Um, something that we sort of um, had sort of uncovered in various archival research and other people's research as well, not just ours. Um, but we were able to persuade the Smithsonian, who holds that uh, fossil, to change their records to reflect the fact that it was Yusra who identified that. So this is kind of our site and what we do. But I'm mostly here to talk about how we do it. And we do it um, by being insanely connected all the time, all the time. We're always there. Someone will answer you. We're in many time zones. Um, little backstory: uh, we are four early career academics, uh, basically hydra-headed anarchistic collective. Not an anarchist collective, but very anarchic. Um, so we meet on Twitter, we start talking about this problem of representation of women, and uh, Friday 10th of May 2013 we decide we're going to launch a blog, a little uh, Tumblr blog that has pictures of these amazing women that we know about but the rest of the world doesn't. Uh, so far to date we have over 100 posts. We post about once a week. We're almost two years old, which is amazing because we thought it'd run for five weeks. Um, but what we're about is participation. I think this is what sort of um, comes in with the crowdsourcing is we are nothing without our community and our community is on our social network. So from the Tumblr, for instance, we have um, you know, 4,300 something followers who are actively sort of following our posts. Facebook is a major, major source of um, interaction for us, both sort of people liking our stuff but sharing it. Um, we've got 4,000 odd likes on Facebook. Uh, but when we post things that really capture the imagination, they go very, very wide. So um, the Lego Academics uh, campaign was to get female scientists represented in this uh, add-on Lego set that you could buy. And it was a big campaign. When it was successful, we posted it, and that post reached 30,000 people which is a lot for a little archaeology blog. Our participation is two-way. It's very, very critical that it's two-way. And Twitter has been the source of a lot of that engagement. So Twitter is a really ideal platform for us because it allows us to talk back instantly. Uh, you know, it's an instant communication. And that's what I think allows people to feel engaged and enjoy uh, contributing to our site. Um, we tweet a lot. We have four of us. Um, one uh, per fortnight will be captain, which is always interesting when you sign up the next week and realize they've changed the entire system, but that's cool. So all of those social media sort of facets, where we can have the conversations on Facebook, on Tumblr, uh, we do have Instagram and Pinterest, though those seem to not be so engaged, but especially Twitter, that's all redirecting people to our sort of central site where they can see sort of the actual archive, um, our blog posts, and the other stuff we put up. Our posting system is um, it's interesting. It's sort of, it evolved. It's very organic. So we thought, well, we know about these women archaeologists, women paleontologists. Um, we'll just find some photos. We'll put up a couple little bios. We'll write the posts. Turns out, A, that's very time consuming, and B, um, we have people who know way more women. Every time we find a woman, someone would say, oh, well, you know, 
my mentor who just retired, or um, you know, uh, my former professor who just passed away, or I heard about this story about this amazing woman at the site I worked at. These come in through our community. Um, and they actively contribute. So we have far more con uh, community contributions, and that proportion is actually changing rapidly to the point where we almost never contribute biographies. They're almost always by someone who was inspired by, someone who was mentored by, someone who was in some way affected by the life of the woman they're featuring. And I think that's actually become the most interesting part of our site. I think our site probably would have tailed off, interest would have faded, if it wasn't for the fact that if you know someone worth celebrating, we have a venue for you to do it. And we're excited to do it. We will find archival permissions for the images. We will um, share it with a big, wide audience. And we have wonderful stories where, um, for instance, someone sent us a, a scan of a lantern slide, which had an image of a woman on it. Um, no one knew what it was. It was just sort of subtitled excavations at Corinth. That got sent around Facebook, Twitter, and someone from the Corinth and, um, excavations identified the woman from 1931. They found, uh, they realized where she must have been standing, what year that must have been. I mean, it's amazing what that engaged community can do, um, which we like to recognize um, for our posters who have reached three posts you do get raised to the Order of the Blazing Trail, which we're mostly, mostly fond of that logo. But um, we, like to, we really like to recognize that because it is massively important. So beyond the biographies, we actually, um, we have several other avenues towards engagement. Um, Gabe Mashenka from UCL has been doing uh, these lovely trail tunes featured as Honor Frost, who may or may not have fought an octopus, nobody knows. Um, but we also provide a venue for things like book reviews, uh, conference updates, kind of things that uh, what we think our community might be possibly interested in, and then obviously the subcategory of rants, um, which weirdly is an active part of our crowdsourcing. We have a lot of rants. I think um, as fairly active, uh, we're probably all fairly uh, active feminists, and we're very interested in um, you know, our disciplines, uh, we, we do tend to get pretty involved uh, when something sounds pretty wretched, like the president of Turkey saying that women shouldn't dig, we tend to have a response. And the wonderful thing that we've realized is that because we have this community, we you can't really say we crowdsource a response, but we certainly get one. And this sort of leads to a larger community engagement. And then more people are interested in the site, and more people are interested in our causes, and as far as we're concerned, that's a very good thing. So for instance, uh, by the way, that's Sally Binford, um, Lewis Binford's wife, who never gets enough credit. She's fascinating, look her up. There's an interview, one. read it, it's on our site. Um, so we have lots of rounds. Um, some of you may have seen this recently. Um, it depends on how fond you are of your shoes or your Twitter. Uh, there was a, it's, it's, this is a, a great story actually. There's a little schoolgirl, Sophia Trowell. She was eight years old. She went into Clark's. She wanted dino stomp shoes, which are these shoes that make a dinosaur footprint or something. And um, Clark said, uh, we don't make them for girls. Uh, so we don't really believe that. So we, we sort of said, well, you know, these are the shoes my dinosaur lives on. And we got a fantastic response. We got so many tweets. Um, shares, Instagram, Facebook, everything is absolutely wonderful. So this actually ended up in the Telegraph. So many people managed to tweet. By the way, the hashtag's still going. If you want to share, we're still collecting them all. But it's wonderful to see. I mean, we didn't even know that our community reached that for or people cared that much. So, you know, seeing hundreds and hundreds of people tweeting these things, it's just, you know, that's pretty cool. And also, um, in case anyone's wondering, Sophia has seen them. Her mom um, has collected them and shown them to Sophia, who now wants to be a scientist. So, win! Um, in terms of really engaging and sort of stuff, um, we do a lot of blogging, obviously. We also participate in a lot of uh, slightly more academic um, enterprises. We have been all over the shop. That's why there's four of us. You never see all of us in the same place. It's not because we don't all exist. That's just a rumor. Uh, we also do a lot of mainstream media when we can. Um, articles for The Guardian. Uh, sort of chapters and sort of more popular books. And I think all of that is attempting to not only sort of engage our audience, but find our audience. We're not a solely academic um, organization. 
So we do some really random stuff. Um, we've got, uh, we've, we've done videos with uh, Catherine Bennett, who is a uh, performance artist. That was a video filmed on the Crystal Palace Dinosaurs. We do things like Skeptics in the Pub, Cambridge Science Festival. And most awesomely, this is Fossil Hunter Lottie, our doll. Very exciting. Launching on May 21st. Can't buy her yet. But um, we consulted on a doll from a, for a company that actually makes dolls that have realistic body proportions, except for the head, because apparently they need more room for the hair. I don't know. Um, but of, a, of an eight-year-old. And they asked us for scientific content to put in the box, cards and things that go in the box. It was, it was really wonderful to be able to contribute like that. I think that's, if, if our mission is to reset imaginations and be role models, then I don't. Plus, it's a doll. Awesome. Um, so I think kind of my point here is it takes a community for us to be a community organization. It takes engagement constantly with um, people who are interested in our subject matter, who might be friends or mentees or you know, family members of the women we feature. It takes people who are interested in our causes, people who we're speaking to on Twitter, people we're speaking to on Facebook. Um, and one of our sort of major findings in this project is really that we're very, very linked in the same way that women in the past were linked. If we go back to that idea of Dorothy Garrett being on her own, the only female UK professor, well, there she is on site, surrounded by women. Um, Dorothy Garrod is the center there. All of those arrows are connections via um, uh, personal relationships, uh, teaching relationships, being in the field together. So all of these women, and this, um, this document is available on Figshare. You can find it on our website, and you can also find it um, on Figshare under Victoria Herridge. Um, but it's amazing to sort of think that most of the big names in uh, both archaeology and paleontology are linked either because some of them went to school together, some of them um, studied under the same woman. And Margaret Murray from UCL is a really good example of someone who taught almost all of the female Egyptologists for a generation. So all of those arrows are links of some sort between the women. And I think that's what we found as well, is that um, that community link is the thing we find in the past and it's still present and future, and it's fairly important to how we operate. So um, I will sort of say thank you generally to anyone who's contributed or anyone shared or put up pictures of their shoes. Um, and anyone wants to contribute, we always accept guest posts. We always uh, accept just random suggestions. Um, so go to our website, um, bother us on Twitter, it's at Trailblazers and um, just let us know who we should be celebrating.